right, it's November. That means college auditions are coming up, summer festival auditions are on the horizon. But basically for you, it means that you're going to be practicing a ton of snare drum over the next few months. So today I want to talk about how to find the perfect grip for snare drum. So when I was in high school, I used to drive an hour every weekend to go see the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. I'd bring my binoculars and I would sit in the very top row and zoom in on my teacher's hands. Brian Jones was the timpanist at the time. So I'd zoom in and try to figure out exactly how he was holding onto the sticks. I was looking at how his thumb lay on the mallet, exactly where his back fingers were, how far they were spaced apart. Were they touching the stick? I watched exactly how his stick bounced off of the drum and the angles of his arms compared to his wrists. I tried to take in everything I could so that I could bring it back to the practice room and copy it so that I could become a professional like him. There's all these kind of rules out there. There's these codified systems of playing. You hear about the German style of timpani playing and the French style. The German being where the backs of your hands are pointed up and you play sort of like this and then the French style where your hands are turned over and your thumbs are pointed up and you're kind of playing like this. I don't know if those are accurate or if they use those in Germany or France, probably not, um, but that's just kind of what Americans are taught in high school. There's also these different schools of playing, like the Cloyd Duff School of Timpani playing that is taught through his students now and at master classes. There's the Alan Abel or the Philadelphia Orchestra way of playing snare drum, and I'm sure there's a ton of variation within that orchestra. But one of the things I always remember when I went to the master class is, you know, you use a lot of arm, especially for snare drum rolls. That's something that's been really useful to me. I remember learning one thing. Um, I learned never put your pinky out when you're playing a snare drum roll. And I would look around and see these teachers who put their pinky out, and I would observe, you know. They're breaking the rules. I'm glad I learned this at a younger age so that I'll never let my pinky out when I'm playing a snare drum roll. But what I realized was after you know a decade and a half of playing snare drum and achieving you know an orchestra job and recording the Delacluse etudes, I looked in the mirror the other day as I was practicing downstairs at the Met, and I realized in my snare drum rolls, my pinky stick out. These rules are important sort of as guidelines things for you to think about and try out as you're learning your own perfect snare drum grip. After learning all these rules, what you find is that nobody can get in your head and understand what it's actually like to hold the stick and what the stick actually feels like as you're playing. Your fingers are shaped differently than other people. You, you have different lengths of fingers. Your thumb sticks out differently. Certain muscles in your hand are stronger than other ones in a unique way that only applies to you. So the best perfect snare drum grip for you is your own. That's fine for you to play in a different way eventually than these sort of codified rules that you've learned. What you really need to do to find the perfect snare drum grip is to start thinking of it as you developing your own school of playing that works best for you. How do you play soft rolls? How do you play loud rolls? So here are three steps you can go through to develop your own school of playing. The first is learn. Learn from your teacher, learn from other students in your youth orchestra, watch other professional orchestras and bring your binoculars. Try to take in all the ideas that you can. Step two is to bring them back into the practice room and actually ingrain them into your playing. Whatever your teacher says, you know, use more arm when you're playing snare drum rolls, fine. When you're playing soft, make sure that your back fingers are still on the stick a little bit. Learn these things as though they're gospel. Step three is to start making decisions for yourself about your school of playing. What's the best way that you can play a soft snare drum roll? Is it the way you used to play it? Is it the new way that your teacher taught you? Or is it some kind of Frankenstein version of both that's half of the old way and half of the new way? You start to develop the best grip that you can use for soft snare drum, for loud snare drum rolls, for loud singles. All of these different optimal grips make up what eventually become your perfect snare drum grip. So I made this diagram of my five most commonly used snare drum grips that sort of makes up my school of playing, the way that I usually hold the sticks. I tried to get really detailed with it and go in depth about the exact angles that my fingers uh, have in comparison with the sticks and exactly which knuckles the stick lines up with for different things. And uh, I made this diagram on a PDF. You can download it now at robnopper.com slash five grips. Thanks for watching.